Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more Pokemon Blaze Black 2. Last time, we completed our exploration of Castelia City after three not long episodes, but it's just been a quite a long journey to explore the entirety of Castelia City, but now we've finally done it. And in this episode, we are going to be taking a boat ride to see if we can capture a legendary Pokemon. What Pokemon is that? Well, either you read the title of the video, or we're going to be seeing in just a moment. It is small compared to a luxury liner, but the size of a ship doesn't change the feeling of adventure when you're out on the open sea. Would you like to go to Liberty Garden? Absolutely. Your timing is perfect. The ship is about to leave. Please get aboard the ship and wait. And off we go, away from Castelia City. Not forever, but for the moment. And here we are at Liberty Garden. 200 years ago, an ultra-rich family bought this island. They named it Liberty Garden. It's a place where people and Pokemon can live freely. As you can probably guess, this island is basically a spoof on Liberty Island and Ellis Island in New York City. Pokemon follow their trainer's orders without question, and yet some people try to make Pokemon do bad things. Yes, a long time ago, in Pokemon Black and White, there was actually an invasion here by Team Plasma. Unfortunately, you would only be able to access this event if you downloaded the Liberty Ticket shortly after launch, but in Black and White 2, you can freely explore the area at your leisure. Nowadays, there aren't as many tourists visiting here. It's boring. With the alternatives, guys like Team Plasma, I'm okay with being bored. Exactly, sir. I wonder how the Pokemon felt while it was in that room. It must have been lonely for a long time. Hmm. Dock 2. To board the tour boat, go back to Dock 1. This dock, as far as I know, goes unused. I don't think there's any boats that ever dock here, although I believe in Black and White 1, there was a boat here that I believe Professor Juniper used? If I'm not mistaken? I might be. I, the last time I did that event was a long time ago. The Victory Pokémon. Victini. They say it can give its trainer incredible power. I wonder who has access to that power now. Hmm. Have you heard about this? A rich pro per Ooh, wow. A rich person was protecting a Pokemon from bad people here. Somehow, coming here gives me power. Very, very interesting stuff. And right here we have... This lighthouse shines with the light of freedom. Only authorized personnel may enter. Meaning me, obviously. And inside here... All the way down at the bottom of this dank and dreary tower. Turns out that Pokemon that people were talking about up on the surface is still here. This was not here in the original Black and White 2. This is a Blaze Black 2 and Old White 2 exclusive event. So, without further ado, I introduce you guys to... Victini. This is a level 15 legendary Pokemon, meaning it's entirely possible I might accidentally knock this thing out. I do not want to do that, but if I do, I'll unfortunately have to reset the game in order to give myself another shot at it. This is a very strong fire type Pokemon. So as you can guess, this is the Pokémon I was hinting at when I was talking about having a little secret weapon for the upcoming gym. Because this is probably the most powerful Fire-type Pokémon we're going to be able to get a hold of by far by the time we start the gym. So this might be a little bit cheap, but I would like to have Victini on my side for the gym fight, so we are going to be doing our best to catch it. Unfortunately, its catch rate is extraordinarily low, so... We could potentially be here a while attempting to catch this thing. But yes, this is the first of very many legendary Pokémon we're going to be encountering throughout our adventure. Unfortunately, our adventure is going to be very back-heavy in terms of legendaries, because most legendary Pokémon, in fact, I believe aside from this one, all legendary Pokémon are restricted to either near the end of the game or after the end of the game. So, that's basically what we're going to have to work with. This is going to be the only legendary Pokémon we're going to be going for for a long time, but I figured since you can do it immediately, and I'm quite worried about my 
capabilities of taking on the gym without it, I think we're gonna be trying to catch Victini. Unfortunately, it is incinerating my Servine, so I think what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to switch Pokemon. Man, this D-pad, We're gonna switch over to Fluffy, and we are going to be paralyzing this thing, and then I think we'll be good to start chucking Pokeballs at it. Unfortunately, its catch rate is, I believe, 3 out of 255, which is the lowest it can possibly be. It looks like it does have Endure, but I don't want to count on it using Endure at the same turn I hit it with a really powerful attack. Although, if you're playing along and you want to give that a shot, it is a valid strategy if you want to get it down to 1 HP. But I think as it stands now, we're probably good to catch it. I'm realizing I probably should have chucked a Quick Ball right at the beginning of this fight here, because Quick Balls are, I believe, four times or five times maybe even effective on the first turn of a fight. But I'll be honest, I always forget. Anyway, we're going to start chucking Pokeballs at this thing. It'd be really cool if we got a critical capture on this, but I doubt that's going to happen. Yeah, as you can see, it's paralyzed and in the red, and that Pokeball didn't even shake. Honestly though, between Pokeballs and Great Balls, I feel like there isn't too terribly much of a difference at this stage in the game, especially given that Victini is only level 15. So I figured we could afford three times as many Pokeballs as we could Great Balls. So I bought a whole ton of Pokeballs for this fight instead, in the hopes that we'll be able to catch this thing. Unfortunately, the process is pretty much going to be the same from here on out. Chuck Pokeballs and try and catch Victini. Now, in the past Pokemon LP that I did, what I would do is I would cut away in between every single time it shook, and it would basically turn into counting to one with Everchanger. Now, I'm sure some people found that funny, but honestly, it was quite a pain in the butt to edit those things out, and especially since I've sort of had to downgrade my editing equipment, and, uh, well, software, rather. I don't want to go through the hassle of making those edits. So I think what we're going to do is we are going to be cutting away right here, unless I can magically catch it, Darn it. We are going to be cutting away right here, and we're pretty much going to be skipping straight to when I catch it. I know that seems a little bit odd right now, but the editing process was quite frustrating in my Liquid Crystal LP. Plus, later on in our adventure, we are going to be catching multiple legendary Pokémon per episode, so that's basically what I want to do. So without further ado, I am going to cut away here, and I will meet you guys back when we have successfully captured Victini. Yes! Gotcha! Victini was caught. And as you can probably tell, I was here for quite a while. Victini, the victory Pokémon. When it shares the infinite energy it creates, that being's entire body will be overflowing with power. And that power is exactly what we're gonna need going forth here to our next gym fight. So yeah, that's awesome, we caught Victini. Let's look at the damage here, I actually wasn't paying too much attention as to how many Pokeballs we have left. Oh my word, this D-pad. Ugh, just gonna have to get used to it. We have... 12 Pokeballs left, which means it took 38 Pokeballs to catch this thing. Yikes, that is a lot of money down the drain, but hopefully it will be worth it because we now have Victini on our side. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that was our 60th Pokemon, am I correct about that? I am, Victini was the 60th Pokemon that we obtained in our adventure, which is super awesome. Do you want to go back to Castelia City? Absolutely we do. Alright, so let's head back to Castelia City. And here we are. Now, I'm not entirely sure how long this episode is going to be with that cut. It'll probably be a little bit shorter, but I'll do a little bit more in this episode instead of just catching Victini. Simply because that cut probably shortened the episode by quite a bit. 
So we're going to head in here and first off, we're definitely going to want to heal because that thing did a lot of damage to my party. Like, wowee. It was dishing out the pain, man. Oh. Alrighty, so now that we've got our Pokemon healed, I think we're going to want to adopt Victini into our party as soon as possible. So we're going to head into Amanita's PC, and there is our Victini. It knows Confusion, Incinerate, Quick Attack, and Endure. Its ability is Victory Star. I'm not entirely sure what that does, so I think let's hop into the status screen first and foremost and check it out. Victini. Victory Star boosts the accuracy of its allies and itself. That could be very, very useful. Especially considering... Actually, no, all of its moves have 100% accuracy, so that's pretty good. Alright, so it knows Incinerate and Confusion. Incinerate is probably the most useful to us at the moment. Now, I believe Victini does have a signature move called V-Create. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure V-Create can only be obtained on Event Victini given out by Nintendo. So, unfortunately, I have a feeling that if that is the case, and I'm pretty sure it is, our Victini is not actually going to know v-create during this LP, which is a little bit unfortunate, but then it's the ropes. That might play into my decision as to whether or not I want to use it after the gym fight. But anyway, I want to take the experience share off of Houndour and give it to Victini, because Victini, although powerful, is only level 15, which is a little bit low. But anyway, heading right over here from the Pokemon Center, we have Iris. Hey, come on! Thumb Pier is past here. If you mention a suspicious place in Castelia City, the only places that come to mind are Narrow Street and here. So why didn't we go to Narrow Street? I could swear I just saw the sky tint a little bit. I think they make that a little bit more gradual. It's currently 3.30 local time where I am, so I guess that's a pretty cool gradual transition they have going. This way, this way, come on, have a look! Of course, I might just be crazy and it didn't actually happen and I'm just in that case, but I suppose that's also viable. Anyway, let's head down here. You can go inside the sewers from here. What do you think? Seems pretty suspicious, right? Man, they have fun with their cameras here. It's right down in that little area. David, did you find Team Plasma? No, I have not. Not yet, at least. Ah, those dirty Pokemon thieves! That means the only place I still haven't checked is... David, help me out. Man, that guy is pretty serious. Yep, the sewers are a perfect place for hiding. Indeed they are, so I think next time on Pokemon Blaze Black 2, now that we have captured Victini and added it to our team, we are going to be heading into the sewers at the behest of Iris and Hugh in search of Team Plasma. Apologies for this episode being short, I'm pretty sure it is going to be quite short compared to other episodes, simply because I had to cut a huge chunk of me throwing Pokeballs for 20 minutes out of the center of it. But them's the ropes. Hopefully you guys can forgive. Wow. Hopefully you guys can forgive me. Man, I've made like 200 something videos on this channel and I still trip over my words. Hopefully you guys can forgive me. I did it again. Huh. Hopefully you guys can forgive me because we caught Victini this episode, which is pretty awesome. So I think in between episodes I'm probably going to try and most likely fail to fix my stuttering problem because honestly it's still quite bad and without further ado I will see you guys next time